Hello, welcome to the series focused on the histological structure of the eye. Today we are going to cover the structure of a cornea, sclera, conjunctiva and the limbus. In other videos we will cover the rest, including the lens, iris, retina and other important parts of the eye. Before we get into the histological structure itself, I would like to remind you of the basic components of the eye, such as the tunica fibrosa, vasculosa and nervosa. Not every structure of the eye can be assigned to one of these categories, but we will go through them step by step. The eye is further divided into the front and the back segment of the eye, while the border is represented by the lens. The posterior segment of the eye is filled with vitreous humor or vitreous body. The anterior segment of the eye is divided into an anterior and posterior chamber in which the aqueous humor circulates. We will talk about this in next video. This eye looks a little bit odd. Uh, there is a rupture in this region. Mm, there are no fluids inside. This is caused by preparation on the slide. Now let's look at the components of the tunica fibrosa named cornea and sclera, called corneal sclera coat. The cornea is a transparent part of the eye, located most ventrally. When we look at the eye from the side, we see that it arches in front of the iris and pupil and continuously merges into the sclera in the area called limbus. The sclera represents the white part of the eye, it's all around its circumference and in the front it's covered by the conjunctiva, which is continuous with the conjunctiva of the upper and lower eyelids. The border between the cornea and the sclera is the limbus, as I mentioned. Thus, when we look into someone's eyes, we are actually looking through the transparent cornea and we can see the limbus all around. And the white part is the sclera, covered by conjunctiva. Let's look at the cornea. The cornea on the specimen stained with amatoxyl and eosin is a thick plate composed of three layers separated by membranes, so a total of five layers. It is half a millimeter thick in the center and one millimeter on the edge. On the outer surface, it's covered by a stratified squamous epithelium, which is non-keratinizing. This epithelium is capable of renewal by mitotic cell division in the basal layer. In the limbus area, we find stem cells for this epithelium. Cells are replaced every seven days. You can probably imagine that this epithelium is highly exposed to UV radiation. And while the skin defends itself with the help of melanin, the cells of the surface epithelium of the cornea defend themselves with the help of ferritin molecules, located about the nucleus. Ferritin is an intracellular protein which stores iron. The epithelium sits on a basement membrane, also called Bauman's membrane. This membrane has a composition similar to basal membranes under any epithelium, because it functions as a barrier and supports the epithelium. However, it cannot regenerate itself, so when damaged, it heals with scarring, which can limit vision. The stroma of the cornea, substantia propria, occupies about 90% of its thickness and is made up of about 60 lamellae. Each of the lamellae consists of parallel arranged collagen fibrils. Individual lamellae are arranged perpendicular. The stability of the arrangement is maintained by proteoglycans and collagen type 5. So the stroma is composed of specifically arranged collagen fibers with very few cells, called keratocytes. They resemble fibroblasts, they are very similar. It's believed that this arrangement is responsible for the transparency of the cornea. It's also important to keep the cornea in dehydrated state. And this is ensured by the epithelium on the inside of the cornea. As a result of the damage, uh, inflammatory cells can migrate into the stroma of the cornea and edema occurs. This manifests as a lack of transparency of the cornea. The inner epithelium is similar to the endothelium of blood vessels, 
and ensures the transport of ions and substances from and to the cornea. We call it the corneal endothelium. It sits on the so-called decimates membrane. Uh, this membrane is about 10 micrometers thick and in fact, and unlike Bauman's membrane, uh, it's not a normal basement membrane of the epithelium. It's a thick base lamina. In contrast with Bauman's membrane, it has a considerable capacity for repair when the inner endothelium of the cornea is preserved, of course. The stomach's membrane extends peripherally beneath the sclera as a trabecular meshwork forming the pectinate ligament. Uh, strands from pectinate ligament penetrate the ciliary muscle and sclera, maintaining the normal curvature of the cornea. The corneal endothelium is formed by a single layer of flat cells with a limited capacity for repair. Severely damaged endothelium can only be repaired by transplantation. Let's sum this up. Cornea has five layers. First layer, stratified squamous epithelium with Bauman's membrane underneath, which is a normal base membrane. Next we have stroma, uh, made up of 60 lamellae, or organized in a specific pattern. It resembles dense regular connective tissue. Then we have Destamets membrane, which is really thickened basal lamina. And the last layer uh, is inner epithelium, also called endothelium, made of one layer of squamous cells. Now let's look at the sclera. This is already mentioned limbus, the border between the cornea and the sclera that contains stem cells for outer epithelium of the cornea. We cannot differentiate these stem cells, they are probably somewhere over here. To differentiate them, we would need some special immunostaining. The sclera is the white part of your eye and actually forms a wall of the entire eye. The substantia propria, the main layer, the main substance, is composed of dense irregular collagen connective tissue. So here we can see a layer of thick collagen fibers and many fibroblasts. The sclera is about 1 mm thick and 0.7 mm in the limbus area. Sclera is covered with conjunctiva in the front part. Conjunctiva consists of stratified columnar epithelium containing numerous goblet cells. Uh, in this case, in this specimen, we can see more stratified squamous epithelium. It's probably because of the process of metaplasia of the epithelium. Metaplasia in general means that one type of differentiated epithelium, in this case the stratified columnar, is replaced by another type of differentiated epithelium, and in this case, the stratified squamous epithelium that can be seen here. There is a lamina propria underneath, composed of loose connective tissue. Inflammation of the conjunctiva is called conjunctivitis, and it can be seen as redness of the eye. The layer about the sclera is called the episcleral layer, and is composed of loose connective tissue connected to the periorbital fat. Episcleral space, or tenons space, is between the episcleral layer and substantia propria and allows the free eye rotation inside the orbital cavity. Below the substantia propria of the sclera, there is a supracorate lamina, lamina fusca, inner aspect adjacent to the chorate and contains thinner collagen fibers and elastic fibers as well as fibroblasts, melanocytes and macrophages. Let's go back to the corneal scleral limbus once again, the transitional zone. Bauman's membrane of the cornea ends abruptly in this place. Surface of limbus contains two distinctive types of epithelial cells, conjunctival cells and corneal epithelial cells. Don't forget that basal layer contains corneal limbal stem cells that maintain the corneal epithelium. There is a transition from avascular cornea to vascular sclera. The limbus region, specifically the iridocorneal angle, contains the apparatus for the outflow of aqueous humor. But we will talk about circulation of aqueous humor in the next video. Thanks for watching! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.
and if you have any questions or you want to add something you can put that down in the comment section below thanks for watching and goodbye